Hi there, welcome back. As you can see, this thing has uh, got a new look to it. It's lost its face. And um, this is something I do for in various reasons. One of them is that you don't want to damage that faceplate. If you break that, it's game over. Very difficult to get those things, very difficult to repair. You can reproduce them as I've done in the past, but they take a hell of a lot of work. Anyway, the faceplate has come off and um, so have all the knobs. And the reason for that is some of the parts of this radio are incredibly difficult to get to. As you can see, uh, with this side off, you can actually get to a lot of the components that otherwise would be unreachable. And um, this thing has three PC boards, four actually, but there's a main one here with some of the switching. There's another one underneath there, which covers part of the bottom of this one. And then there's that one over there, which covers part of the bottom of this one. So to get to these components to test them, you really have to have access from the front. The other thing it does, uh, as I said, is it keeps the faceplate safe. Put it away. We'll clean it up and re replace it later. It also gives us access to components that we have to reach on the actual front, like the magic eye on the side, there's uh, the components on there, the actual uh, potentiometers so that you can oil them, and of course the tuning here as well that you need to oil. There's another tube there, which I believe is the stereo indicator, which I haven't really looked at too closely. But what we've uh, determined, or can see from, uh, from this removal, is that there's a fair amount of dirt, which is normal, but there's also a bit of rust on some of these elements. Now, fortunately, you can actually remove this whole thing, and uh, that's what I'm going to do, and then dunk it in the anti-rust, and that should come out as good as new. But this gives us an opportunity to clean this all up. Here we have the, the knobs that were removed, and as you can see, there's a fair amount of coloring and dirt on them, but um, the fact that they're out here makes them a lot easier to clean. It's always good to see it now and get an idea of what it looks like later. Um, it gives, allows me to oil the um, switching properly and clean that as well. Um, you can't really use this without the knobs unless you've got guitar player's fingers but it certainly lets us clean them up and oil them up properly. Now, behind the faceplate is this white, supposed to be white, um, it's a sort of acrylic sheet which acts as a backdrop to the uh, dial indicators and the faceplate itself. That needs some cleaning as well, maybe even, maybe even a coat of, or spray of paint, we'll see. Put that aside for now so we don't damage any of that. And let me show you what's happened with the actual electrical restoration part. What you see here with all the green markings is um, all the lines and connections and components that have been checked. And then anything that gets swapped out is marked out in red, as you can see on that edge there. Those two resistors were, uh, were replaced, as I mentioned in the previous video. What this is, is actually a check of the B plus lines. I mean, if you've got no supply, you've got no uh, functioning valve. So I take the B plus and I start following it through and marking in green where I have checked that the connections are, uh, are made and are correct. It lets you simultaneously check for component values where, for example, this line here has a 2.2K resistor on here. So if I go to um, a known B plus point where I know that I've got my B, this is the second B plus, the lower one that's gone through the uh, transformer, upper transformer chokes and resistors. But this is uh, the second B plus, I think it's supposed to be about 240 volts or so. If I take one of those points and one of them is actually the second filter capacitor and I follow that continuity line through there, I'll come across this resistor which I can't see right now, obviously. But if I follow through there and I've got a, I've got a, a coil on there, this is in one of the uh, IF transformers. Now a coil is supposed to be a very low DC resistance. So I follow that through there. There's another coil. I follow that through there. That's a, 
a capacitor, so there's no uh, DC connection, connection. But if I go to pin 6, the anode of this tube, which uh, I can actually measure quite easily, I should measure between there and the B plus, B2 plus, if you want to call it that, a DC resistance, which will be the sum of the DC resistance of that coil, the DC resistance of that coil, the 2.2K, and nothing else. So if I get 2.2 something, I know that that resistor is fine and that that line has got proper continuity. So you do this, or I do this, all the way through to make sure that the positive uh, supply is there. Simultaneously, obviously, um, when you're on the tube, you might as well check some other connections. Actually, this is another um, B plus line, a B3 plus. And I measure that through there, and it says 33K. Um, I actually get 22K, if I recall correctly. Now, this may not be wrong, so I need to check what the markings are on the resistor. The reason it's, I say it may not be wrong is that these schematics are not exact. Uh, some of these are for different um, iterations of the, of the model. So if I look for this resistor and it says... It says 33K, I've been measuring 22, then I know that this resistor's got to be replaced. So I've actually marked the connections to it. I haven't painted through it, which means that it still needs checking. Then, you know, the signal goes through there and it goes to various switches. This switch, for example, is switch K. And when they draw the schematic, they tell you what the settings are. In this particular case, it's set for UKW, so it's set for FM. Now, switch K, if we go down here, K is the off switch. When UKW is activated, it means the radio is on. It means that 6 and 7 is active. It says shown in position UKW, which means that we would assume that this is showing the normal on position. So we follow that through. And one way, it goes up there, across there, and it actually supplies our uh, B plus to the ECC85 tube, which is the, um, this is the FM tube. It's got a, it's a, another dual triode. And it actually supplies this through two lines. So it comes in here, there's a small filtering over there. It goes through 470 ohms and then it goes in there and then that goes straight through through that coil, that inductor. So it's a low DC resistance up there, up there, up there to one, to that anode. So that was uh, measured as correct. And then if you take the same line from there to there, it goes through there. There's a 33K resistor up through that. That's one of the um, coupling transformers for the output itself but it's low DC resistance up there, up there, up there, and it goes to the second anode. So to measure this, for example, to, to paint this in here, you can actually measure between pin one and six, and what you should get is, if you go down here, you should get that DC resistance, which is low, you should get 33K, you should get that low DC resistance, so you should get about 33 point something K between one and six. And then you make sure that they both connect to the actual supply point through a 470 ohm resistor. Now, what I found is the resistors that are exact, uh, that correspond exactly to the, um, to the schematic uh, are very, very close, very, very close um, in value. So they've held their value very, very well. After the actual um, checking of the B+, I then go and just check two main capacitors here, which could pose some sort of danger if I switch this on too early. And those capacitors are these, this one and the one corresponding to the other channel. Now, why is this, uh, why is this so important? This is the capacitor that couples the output from the preamp tube at pin 9, the anode, goes through there, there's that load resistor which connects to the B+. Plus. Okay, now that there is high voltage. There's about 200 and I believe it's 210 volts over here. So that's high voltage. 
and that then couples the audio signal being generated, amplified by the uh, preamp tube. It couples that to the input of the output power valve. That's the pentode inside the same tube. Okay. Now it couples to there, so it brings a signal through there. There's a 100k resistor. There is a 1k, they call that a grid stopping resistor. This is to prevent oscillations. And the signal goes to the grid of that tube to get amplified and push through the transformer. But if you connect that, if you've got this capacitor here to allow the audio through, it's a 22 nanofarad capacitor high voltage. If this thing starts leaking DC, then what happens is that the bias of this grid goes haywire. Now the bias of this grid is produced by a current flowing through that resistor over here. This is the cathode and the cathode actually has a resistor here of 68 ohms, which in this case measured about 70 ohms. So it's very, very exact. There's the, the so-called uh, cathode bypass cap, which I haven't checked yet. It's not uh, blown, but I haven't checked for value and leakage. And then that creates a voltage over here, a positive voltage with reference to ground. Now, because this point is at zero volts, it's connected to ground through that one meg resistor and the one K, it's effectively at zero volts. The difference in voltage between that and that is about, I think in this case, it's supposed to be about five or six volts. Now, that means that this uh, tube is in cutoff. It's like a tap that's partially closed, and it's like a tap that's ready to receive a swinging signal here, which is the same as if you went to a tap and, and did this. Then your water would flow through there. In this case, it's the current that flows through there in synchronicity with the audio and that's how the audio signal is amplified. Now if this thing is producing, is leaking, you've got zero volts there which is what you want, zero DC volts there which is what you want. You've got about 200 maybe 100 and something volts over there. If this thing starts leaking DC, the voltage here could very very quickly rise and if it rises it means that the shutoff function of this bias is bypassed which means you're basically opening this tube completely to allow as much current as wants to flow to flow through there and you blow up your tube and you blow up your output transformer as well if you're unlucky. So these two capacitors, this capacitor here is extremely important to check. And um, I found that this thing was like new. Okay, I haven't painted it in here. As you can see, this was done last. This cap looks like it was produced yesterday. And um, the reason is quite frankly, quite, uh, quite simple. These capacitors in the older radios, uh, I mean, you're talking about a 54 year old radio as or 55 year old radio as younger, but the older radios, these caps were all uh, very leaky. They were paper caps or various types of, of, of uh, construction that leaked dramatically with age. The new ones, the film caps that were starting to get used uh, quite regularly on these sets don't leak as much. Some of them don't leak at all. This was the case. I applied it to the, um, the leakage tester that I built and you can look at that. There's a video uh, that I can link above and it at 350 volts, which is the maximum voltage that my leakage tester goes to, it leaks zero, but zero. The same applied to this guy over here. This is the corresponding uh, coupling cap to this pentode, same story, no leakage at all. So what that means is I've got this to the point where I can take the next step. And the next step is to test, to switch this on um, without any tubes and make sure that we have the voltages actually reaching the various points where um, my green markings show they should reach. Now, the reason I'm going to do it without tubes is that I still don't want to risk a catastrophic uh, failure, but I do want to make sure that um, the integrity of the supply lines is, uh, is correct. So that's what we're going to do next. Right, I'm going to try power up and I'll tell you exactly what I'm going to do as I go through it. First thing we do is we connect the power supply to the socket here, shift it closer can only fit in one way so there's no mistake 
and it's done. It is away from anything, so no shorts. You've got to be very careful. There's live voltages on there. It's plugged into the lamp limiter unit here. I've got everything off except one lamp. So I've got 40 watts, uh, a 40 watt light bulb in there. That is the maximum restriction. So if there's a short, that'll be the least amount of current flowing through there. It's on limit mode. It's off. Now I've removed all the tubes, most of them. Two output tubes. What is this one? Preamp? No, this is the IF uh, amplifier, uh, the mixer oscillator, the ECH81, the ECC85 over here on the left, that's the FM1. What I have done is I've left the two um, Magic Eye tubes, the EM87 I think it's called, and the stereo indicator on the left there. The reason is I want to have some current draw, both in the B plus line and also on the, um, the heater line, not much. But what we need to do now is I'm going to switch it on and watch the limiter. Right now I'm not particularly interested in audio. I'm actually just making sure that we have no shorts in the power supply. That's the off. Let me put it on. Let's call this. Let's push this one down. I think that's FM. So that is on. The volume. Uh, doesn't matter, but it's it's not going to operate anyway because there's no output tubes. Now for the moment of truth. I'm going to switch that on. We should have that lamp going on brightly to charge the um, filter caps and then it should dim down. We'll be able to see what voltage we've got going to the radio and also the current draw. So without further ado, let's go for it. All right, that glared on, which is what it's supposed to do. And then it's down. We've got 70 milliamp current draw, 220 volts going to the radio. No shorts. And what we've got is we've got the lights on. So our heater, heater voltages are definitely there. The two lamps, the two light bulbs are not burnt. Now I'd like to go and look at some of the voltages on the tubes and see that they're getting there. If we look at the output tubes, we should get high voltage at the anode of the pentode, which is pin 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 5, 6. I'm getting 282, yep. Yeah. And on this one, 288. Two, 283 volts. Okay, good. We should also have it on the screen, which is 3, 276, fine, 276, yep. And we should also have it on the anode of the, of the triode, which is 9, 264, 264, 65. Right, that tube is getting B plus on every section. If we go back one, we should have it on six of this tube. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, 275, 76. We're getting it there. If we go to the ECH81, we should get it on six and eight. Let's see if I can get in there without getting a shock. Five, six, no. That's six, yep. And eight. Okay, why aren't we getting it on eight? I'll tell you why we're not getting it on eight. That tube, um, the triode of that ECH81 only operates, it's the oscillator section, and it only operates when you have one of the AM bands on. This thing is on FM, so if I change this to one of the others, I should get a voltage. Yep, there we go. When you don't have FM, the oscillator must be working, okay? Because you need the oscillator, the AM oscillator, you know, for uh, long wave, medium wave, and short wave. When you select FM, it takes off the B plus from the, the oscillator section of that ECH81 
and only the mixer section works so you don't actually have the oscillator working for the AM which is good so that works and we know that the that selection switch works as well as well so we seem to be getting um, voltages where we should and we don't seem to have shorts or we would have seen smoke by now so what I want to do next I think this is safe I've done a lot of checking and rechecking and I think I'm ready to put in the tubes and actually see if we've got any audio. Let me just have another look and see if I've not mistaken something, forgotten something, uh, overlooked something and get back to try that again. Okay, I think this is safe to test. I've uh, connected a speaker to one of the transformers. The other one doesn't have a speaker on it. We won't, uh, I'm not going to put two speakers on for now. We're not going to run this for long or at high power, so it won't damage the output transformer. I've actually put in, <laughs> always the hopeful, put in an antenna from the mini whip, connected it to the antenna socket of the AM. I've got the tubes in. Ah, what the hell. I've got the volume high. I've got it on, what is this, shortwave, yeah, I think that's shortwave, yeah, and let's hit it. Now this should uh, glow a lot brighter this time, so hopefully it doesn't stay on. Well, it's going up, so it's not a short, it's drawing 110 milliamps, the radio is seeing um, 184 volts. That is glowing dimly, which means that it's drawing current. I see the heaters on the tubes are on. And I don't hear anything. But give it some time. It's Actually, I can hear something on the speaker. Hundred and sixty two volts. Let me give it a little bit more. It's now getting hundred and ninety-six, so I've put two lamps on. And um still don't hear anything. Oh I did hear something. Ha And I can hear reception. What is this? This is this is FM. Let me try. FM is the back one. It's tuning. Okay. FM is receiving, which is brilliant. Let me try a shorter antenna. Brilliant. So FM is working. Actually, FM is working very, very well. Let's try AM. Let's try AMs. We've got medium wave, medium wave, bloody hell, nothing. This is connected to the mini whip. Nothing and yeah, we got a problem. This thing, the tuning condenser stuck. That tuning, if you recall, was not turning the tuning condenser. And now, when I do that, it is completely, completely jammed. So, we're not getting anything from the AM bands. Well, actually, we should get something. We should get noise if it was working. So, put the volume all the way up. This is on medium wave. Ah, we've got something. We've got something on there. That's medium wave. 
Now I can't tune. Well, okay. This is definitely noise that we expect to hear. That would be long wave, same noise. Long wave, medium wave, short wave, FM. Okay, I've tried that. Short wave. It's buzzing. It's it's got the right sounds for short wave and uh, medium wave and long wave, but we can't hear anything because we can't tune. If we were lucky, uh, we would have hit maybe a reception at the station that it is tuned to, but that's just too much luck for us right now. Anyway, the point is, FM is working actually pretty well. So the amplifier is working, the audio is working, the uh, actual uh, alignment doesn't seem to be too far off for the FM because it's very, very clear reception. And now we've just got to sort out why that tuning condenser is not moving at all. It's very, very jammed and it's not, I've actually tried to um, put some drops of, uh, of lubricant in there to try and clean it out, but it seems to be more than just dry grease. It seems to be something mechanical that's blocking it in there. And I think I may have to, unfortunately, I may have to actually dismantle the whole thing. Uh, I want to try something else while we're here. I'm putting it on FM again. Okay. What I want to see is if the uh, tonal controls work. We we'll try treble. So treble from minimum to max. Definitely, definitely noticeable. Let's try get out of this station before I get hit with get hit with a copyright strike. Okay, let's try bass. Whoa. Bass definitely works. That is one of those hi-fi ones. That is stereo. It's dropping the level. And that is piano or normal. Okay, put that off. What we've got is that most of those functions seem to be working. Now, I have oiled them. When I was removing the front end, I started uh, spraying in some lubricant, contact cleaner and everything else into those switches. So it seems to be working. There's one more thing I want to check, and that is I want to check the other output. So if I take it out of this one speaker, if I take it from that speaker, I should get it on that one. Okay, wait a minute. That one's working. That one ain't. Oh, sure. It. It's a stereo switch on. Hmm. Right, one channel isn't working. Not good. Okay, that one's working. This is FM coming through. It should be going to both channels. I'm getting nothing out of that one channel. Now, I know the power transform, the output transformer is working because I did that initial test. At least it was working on low voltage. I have checked the supply to the tubes. I have checked, I haven't checked the, the route to the tubes, to the uh, output. I've cleaned some of the switches, but not all of them. But I think I'm going to switch this off, consider myself lucky while I'm here, because what we've got is actually some pretty good news. The uh, FM is working. It's actually got a very, very clear reception. The AM bands, long wave, medium wave, and short wave, are making the right noises, but I can't tune them because the tuning condenser is completely frozen up. 
and I may have to dismantle the whole thing because when I try and rotate the front it doesn't have any effect on the rotation of the fins. I think maybe something physical is stopping it. Something might have fallen in there or one of the gears has come loose, something. That's a pretty good reason why I cannot uh, tune any of the AM bands. So I'm not too worried about that. At least I know the noise is alright. These tubes seem to be fine because they're doing the job with the FM. The mixer oscillator seems to be fine because I'm hearing the right sounds on the speaker when I put it on AM. The problem I have is one of the outputs is not working. Now that could be a variety of things as I've mentioned. Probably some of the wiring, some of the salter connections coming up to the respective outputs, even between the tubes. Hey, even one of the tubes might be gone. But this seems like a good uh, point to cut this video for now. And um, this will give you some time to look at this more closely, check out the amplifier section first completely, because obviously we know we've got a problem there. I'll take it one step at a time. And when I have something to report, I'll get back to you and um, show you some more progress, hopefully. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe and like and share if you like this sort of thing. And see you back again soon. Bye for now.